steps of Mile One Stadium in St. John's, where uh, NTV, uh, NTV's Dave Squires has been uh, following this story for us throughout the day. And uh, Danny Williams, who is backing the bid to bring the AHL team back uh, to this province, an AHL team back to this province, is standing next to Danny Breen, who's a councillor and a member of the uh, St. John's Sports and Entertainment. We'll listen in live now as this news conference begins. So tell me, guys, is the deal done? Is hockey back in St. John's? Yeah, we certainly think so. Uh, you know, I guess it would be fair to say we've got uh, tentative agreements. You know, from my perspective, we have tentative bilateral agreements. One with True North on the one hand side, uh, which is the franchise, and the second is with the city under the auspices of St. John's Sports and Entertainment Council, that would be yeah. correct? Yeah, subject to council approval of that agreement. And the same on the other side with the bilateral with True North, that's subject to AHL approval, uh, which would you know, take a period of time in order to get that. But if so, everything right now is tentative subject to mode approval. You said you needed a $500,000 subsidy to make the numbers work. How do you bridge that gap? Well, you know, it's going to have to come on the revenue side of the equation. Uh, basically, what I know, it'll be through ticket prices, through corporate sponsorships. You know, uh, when the uh, the application was rejected, uh, which was actually the city's application, we just felt that this is too good an opportunity to let it go. And we just went out uh, with a vengeance and said, okay, let's rework the numbers and let's see what we can do. And uh, now that doesn't mean that the same economic advantage still won't come back to the province because the taxes are there and the economic benefit is there. Uh, but, you know, this was probably our last shot in the NHL franchise, so we, we went in a parent and we, you know, we had good discussions over the last couple of days and, and worked on an agreement and I'm just delighted to say that we pulled it off. So, in effect, ticket prices are going to be higher. Uh, how much higher will ticket prices be to cover the gap? Don't have the exact numbers yet, just that we really have to make sure we get all the other numbers finalized. We haven't, got, we haven't put anything in the paper yet, we've got agreement on principle, basically. Uh, in the same way, with the, we've now exchanged the draft on the affiliation agreement with True North. Uh, so one of those gets signed and the numbers lock in will be those ticket prices. Hopefully, you know, I may be going out on the lane here, but hopefully over the course of the next week, we should be able to be in a position to announce ticket prices because, of course, we want to get season ticket holders engaged and want to get those sold, similar to the Winnipeg process that's going on. And, of course, we'll do is we'll set up a, a website now, which will just be quite simply AHLNL. And that'll be for people just to sort of sign on and express interest and show signs of support, but it will not be a subscription for a, an actual season ticket. Uh, Councilor Green, what kind of uh, concessions or any did you have to make in the lease agreement to uh, secure this deal? We were able to make the lease agreement work within the framework we had, which is that there be no risk to the city and that we work within the existing subsidy. And uh, we, we have no ownership in the team. We have a, a landlord-tenant relationship with, uh, with, the owned, with the operators. And uh, that's the framework that Council uh, sent us out to, to work within, and we achieved that in the lease agreement. So $1.25 million, that's your subsidy yep. to mile one. So you're not on the hook for any more than that. Did you no. had to have a concession on rental rates or any kind of what might be termed a sweetheart deal in order to make this work? No, we made, we made the numbers work within the subsidy that, uh, that we have there, and uh, it makes sense uh, for, for mile one. Uh, we'll bring it to council. We, uh, I don't uh, anticipate that it should be a problem because we're working within the framework that council gave us to work within. So if you can do it within the existing city subsidy and just making up the gap by raising ticket prices and that sort of thing, what, what all the drama around the need for $500,000 from the provincial government? Well, you know, you have to, in the application, well, not my application, it's the city's application, but, you know, like it or not, we are an island out in the middle of the Atlantic. We have Labrador, of course, and we're very fortunate to have Labrador. But we're in a remote, remote location, and you know it's expensive for teams to come here. Uh, when the Leafs were here before, we did not have a travel subsidy. Now there is a travel subsidy. So in order to get this entertainment, the Newfoundland and Labrador, no different than bringing in big rock uh, for concerts and, and whatever, the travel piece is a big piece. It seemed appropriate, I think, that the uh, that the, uh, the the council decided to make an application for some assistance there. If government said no, they said no, and that's their prerogative. And we just put it behind us and we just moved on. Are you taking any greater risk here? Because I know you said you were about $3 million on the hook for this thing. We just spoke to reporters yesterday. Are you putting in extra cash to this big happen? I'm backstopping this. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, I want to make it work. From my perspective, it's, it's not only a great thing for the province, it's also a business proposition for me. And I'm going to do everything I can to make the numbers work. Uh, from my own personal perspective, you know, I've made the statement, I've got a previous interview that in three items alone, travel, the franchise fee, and the lease arrangement, are in excess of $3 million. So before you open the door, before you pay a salary, before you buy a pencil or an eraser, basically you've got $3 million into it. Everything else is operating in administrative expenses. But, you know, I think that the people of the, the, the city, the people of the Avalon area, the immediate Avalon area, and indeed the people of the province, the mayor of Port of yep. yes, was on open line the other day saying that he believes in this. That, together with the corporate community here, I think this will work. I think it'll be a huge success, and I think it'll be a great lift for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador from the, from the, from the, from the city of St. Yep. from a tourism perspective. 
you know, it's going to bring more attention to a great place, and it's good stuff. I've just failed in the city before. What else to do? Well, you know, this is, this is a great hockey province. We've got Allen Cup winners here, you know, the, the Herder's always a big deal. I mean, I, I noticed it was Sunday afternoon, the Herder down here, but over a month ago, people were streaming across the street, into George Street and the restaurants. Hockey fans are really very keen to do that in Labrador. I think it will work. We're also dealing with a first-class organization. And True North and Mark Chipman and Dave Thompson are first-class people. I'm told by Glenn Stanford that they put a competitive team on the ice, that they, they will give us a competitive team, and that's very, very important. And they want to win, we want to win, that's for sure, and that's, that's important. So I think if people see the product, they will support it. And, you know, we're also very fortunate. You know, here we've got a Canadian team in the Stanley Cup. We've got a new Canadian team now in Winnipeg, and we will possibly have the same colors as them and build on all the hype that's going on in Winnipeg. Uh, the Hockeyville was selected recently, and of course now we're going to have NHL teams coming here for an exhibition game. You, know, you can't ask me to there you have it, former Premier Danny Williams announcing on the steps of uh, Mile One Stadium in downtown St. John's that an AHL team, while the deal has been approved, it will have to be, of course, uh, approved by St. John's City Council and then approved by the AHL. We'll have more on this story coming up a little bit later in the Carter File.